now we're going to have a look at the advantages and disadvantages to the averages and at different types of data that we look at. So averages are often used when presenting information to the public. They are also known as measures of central tendency and central location. They give a good idea of where the middle of the data is and people are able to compare themselves to the average. The types of data available will affect the average is best used. The point of the, that the author is trying to prove will also affect which average they use. For instance, if they're wanting to emphasize that something is greater or smaller, then they will tend to use the biggest or smallest average respectively. This can often skew public opinion about what is happening even though the data may not be supported of that argument if they used a different measure of central tendency. So here, the advantages to using the mean is that it can be used for discrete or, continu or continuous quantitative data. Quantitative data means numbers. Discrete means set numbers. Continuous means any numbers in a given range. The median, for the median, the advantages are that it's less affected by extreme values, such as outliers, and it's less affected by skewed data, and it's also useful for non-symmetrical data. So the mean is a good measure. It also takes into account all the values that we have of the data. If it's symmetrical, then that means that there's no, nothing in there that is going to skew our results. Whereas the median would be good regardless of any skew or non-symmetrical of the data. The mode can be used for also quantitative and qualitative data. So qualitative data, whereas quantitative is numbers, qualitative data is where we have words. So for example, if I was to ask people what their favourite colour was, they would give me a qualitative answer and then you cannot find the median favourite colour or the mean favourite colour, but you can easily say what the mode favourite colour is. For the disadvantages, for the mean, we cannot use that for qualitative data, and it is also affected by extreme outliers and skew. For the median, it cannot be found for qualitative data, for the mode, the disadvantages are that uh, there may be no mode if uh, none of the data is uh, identical. And that's common for if we have continuous data, if you were asking exactly how tall people were, you may end up with uh, no person being the same. Uh, there also may be multiple modes. For example, bimodal means that you have two modes, but there could be more than two. Uh, and it also may not actually tell us anything about the value. It may not be the central value. For example, if we had two zeros and then one, two, three, four, five, the mode is zero because we had two of those, but that doesn't tell us anything about the rest of the spread of the data. So if we had which average should be used when describing eye colour to students in a class and why, so because eye colour is going to be a qualitative value, words, that means that the mode is going to be best. So the data will be qualitative, not quantitative. Sorry, I missed a bit of that. So if we have a class of 12 pupils taking a spelling test of 10 words, these scores are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 10, 10, 10. Which average should the teacher use when describing the test results to their manager and why? 
So the teacher, if you think about what their motives are going to be, the teacher is going to want to make it so that their class looks the best. If we have a look here, we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 10, 10, 10. So we know that the mode is going to be 10. If we have a look at the other averages, so just typing them into our calculator, so 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 10, 10, 10. Remember to check that your set says list 1, 1. We can see that the mean is 4.58. And remember to scroll down till you get to med for the median. which is 3.5. So because the teacher is wanting her class to look the best, the teacher should use the mode as this is the highest value and makes the results look better. However, if the teacher's motives were which average should the pupils who scored four or five use to explain their low score to their parents, well, they could use the median if they got five, they could also use the mean. So the pupils could use the median. If five could use the mean. Because then the pupil can say they got above average. And that's something that we see quite a lot of the time now, is people trying to compare themselves on average and say if they're above or below average. But average isn't a set value. Mode, median and mean are all measures of average and as you can see here, 10, 4.5, 8 and 3.5, they can be quite different from each other. So that means that people can manipulate the data by using the average that they wish to use to say that they got above average or below average. So now having a look at different types of data. So sorry that it's just going to be me talking for quite a while. So the different types of data will come up throughout the statistics course. We're just going to quickly talk about what the names of these are and a brief description of them. So we've already talked about qualitative data. So remember that that was non-numerical data. It can also be uh, known as categorical or nominal uh, which has a category or a name. Quantitative data we've also just talked about, and this is where we have numbers. So qualitative and quantitative. I like to remember it as if you want a quality answer, you get collect qualitative data, which is words. If you want to know the quantity, then that would be quantitative data. But there's lots of different ways that you can try and remind yourselves of the difference between those two. We also have discrete and continuous, which we have talked about previous in previous videos, in the numerical measures videos. Discrete data takes on only specific values in a given range. For example, shoe size, clothes size, even age we turn into a discrete set of data. However, continuous data is where it can take on any value in a given range. So how tall you are is a continuous uh, data.
you have to be careful here. When I talked about discrete, I said your age is discrete. We make it so that it's discrete. However, how old you are is continuous. I would tend to try and st stay away from using age or how old you are in these categories if you're asked to give an example of discrete or continuous data, just because usually people do get confused between the difference between those two. But for continuous, you can have height, waist size, actual length of your foot. For discrete, clothes size, shoe size, they're very good ones to use. We also have different types of data. Oops, sorry. We also have different types of data in terms of uh, where we get it from. So we have primary data, which we collect firsthand. That data is usually quite good because we know how it's been collected. So we know if it was collected in a biased way. However, usually that has some limitations to it, such as geographical limitations. We also have secondary data, which is collected from sources. So that means that somebody else has gone out and collected the data and then we're using the data for our purposes. So that has the opposite effect than we said for primary data. So this time we're not collecting the data, so we don't know if it was collected in a biased way or not. However, we can get data on a wider range of subjects or a wider geographical location. We have also previously talked about the difference between a census and a sample it, <coughs> in the uh, standard deviation and variance section of numerical measures. So remember that a census is where we collect data from the whole population, whereas a sample is where we only click it collect it from a proportion of the population and most of the time in statistics we will be handling samples rather than censuses and the reason for that being is that when we get onto hypothesis testing if you have the entire population of data there is no point in uh, performing a hypothesis test because you already know the answer you know what the population mean is or probability is whereas if we have a sample and we're then trying to extrapolate to what that means about the population, then it is worth doing a hypothesis test for. We also have a couple of different uh, ways that we can compare the data or talk about data. Uh, so if we have a single sample of data, that means that we only have one sample. If we have two samples of data, then that means that we have two separate samples. So this is completely separate from each other. So a single sample is where we have one sample. Two samples is where we have two separate samples. So for example, for a single sample, we might just look at girls. But for two samples, we may look at girls as one sample and boys as the other sample. But it is likely that we would be looking at the same thing for those groups. Also, you'll notice in the calculator, if I just go back, we have a one var button, but we also have a two var button. So that means that we're looking at a single variable, which is one var, and two var, which is where we have two variables. So a single variable, oops, sorry, a single variable is where we're only looking at one value or variable for each subject. If, however, we have bivariate data, this is completely different to two sample. Bivariate data is where we have two values for each subject. So we could have, if we go back to our boy-girl example here, instead of having girls and boys, which would be a two sample, we could have the girls grade in maths, which would be a single sample, single variable. And then we could have the girl's mark in maths and the girl's mark in English, which would be bivariate data. And it's very important to know the difference between two sample and bivariate because that depends on what we can do with the data. So it's very important that you understand the difference between them. 
So as most people will also be studying a related topic, such as psychology, in psychology there is also ordinal data, which is data that is ranked. We also handle ranked data, but we don't give it a name, but the name for that is ordinal. Interval data, which we do use quite a lot, but we don't need to know the name for it. Numerical data that has regular divisions, such as temperature. And in psychology, there is also ratio, which uh, intervals data where zero shows something that doesn't exist, e.g. height. So if we have a look back through the last 10 pages, we can see that we have examples of most of these sets of data here. Thank you very much for listening.